Toyota has launched the new BZ5 electric coupe SUV. It uses BYD's Blade battery. It starts at a price of $18,000, meaning it is not far off being half the price of a Tesla Model Y. And uh, it's actually it's pretty good. I mean, I don't particularly like the look of it, but considering it's $18,000, you can tell one thing is certain, and that is Toyota is not making a profit on this car. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching the Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. Toyota. I bash Toyota quite often because they bash EVs. But suddenly they're making them. Uh, well, to be fair, this is really more of a BYD. And it is built by Toyota's joint venture partner in China. Even though this is right now a Chinese EV, that's probably not going to be the case over the long term. Many Chinese automakers, such as Mazda and Nissan, uh, obviously Japanese car brands along with Toyota, they are now selling their Chinese-made EVs outside of China. They're going to sell them to many, many countries around the world. And I think I've said that that would happen on this channel at numerous times, and now it is. Toyota have officially launched their new electric midsize coupe SUV. Looks odd, but... It's a good deal. BZ5 starts at $18,000. The most, the absolute most expensive version of this car costs $22,000. It's considered to be Toyota's third EV in China. They have the BZ3 and the BZ4X. Neither of those cars have sold all that well, even though they're actually very cheap in China. And one of the reasons could be it's they're not built on a dedicated EV platform. They're still built on Toyota's ETNGA platform, and that said, I sh you know they do come with decent architecture because they use BYD's lithium-ion phosphate blade battery and BYD's motors as well. I believe BYD's a lot of other hardware from BYD too. So it's essentially a BYD skateboard. Four versions of the car. The mids, the base model is called the 550 Joy. It's very joyful. It's eighteen thousand US dollars. The Pro is next up. The 550 Pro, nineteen thousand six hundred. You got the Pro Smart Edition, 22,000, and the Pro 630, 22,000. So the 630 is the longest range version of this car. And it's pretty good price considering it's a 74 kilowatt hour battery for 22,000 US dollars. So battery sizes, there's two different options. Pretty much all models of the car, the first three models get the 65 kilowatt hour battery pack, the blade battery. And the longer range Pro 630 Pro for 22,000, that gets the 74 kilowatt hour battery pack. Driving range, 550 kilometers for three model, the first three models. The long range gets 630 kilometers, probably about 520 kilometers WLTP. So it's pretty good range. They all feature the front mounted BOD motor, which actually has been upgraded. It's got more power now. It has 200 kilowatt. That's a lot of power going through the front wheels and 330 newton meters of torque. Now, how do I know that's a lot of power going through the front wheels? Well, I've owned eight different front wheel drive cars. One of them was a Toyota Orion, and that Toyota Orion had exactly the same power, right? 200 kilowatt going through the front wheels. And it's a pretty quick car, actually, and sometimes slightly scary. Anyhow, fast charging is, well, a big letdown, to be honest. It's 90 kilowatt fast charging means that it takes quite a long time to charge. 30 to 80% takes 27 minutes. So 10 to 80%, you're probably looking at about 45, 50 minutes. That's the one big drawback of this car. And it's one reason why, personally, I probably wouldn't recommend it when there's plenty of other options in China that are probably a bit better for the price. Now, don't get me wrong, it's great value. I mean, imagine if, imagine if Toyota sold these around the world for these prices. Imagine if the price was just, hey, we've announced the price. This is the price everywhere around the world. It's going to cost... 18,000 US dollars for this car, people would go crazy. I mean, imagine how many would sell of these. Yeah, anyway. Size, how big is it? It's actually almost very similar size to a Model Y. It's 4,780 millimeters long, and it is 2,880 millimeters to the wheelbase, plus it is 1,866 millimeters wide. Now, of course, it's a coupe, so it's not going to have anywhere near the kind of space inside that, say, the Model Y would have or the XPeng G6 would have. But, I mean, still, decent-sized car for the price, right? One other thing about this car that I think is 
interesting is it has 21 inch alloy wheels now i don't know if they're actually going to come on all models or not i think it's just some models but you know those are pretty pretty big wheels on an ev if they put smaller wheels that get more range interior interior gets a 15.6 inch floating infotainment screen i think it's a bod screen that comes with an electronic rotary gear selector and the cabin includes gesture control voice interaction smartphone integration voice interaction in china is seriously important uh people just they love it and so it has to work really well all models have nine airbags including side curtain airbags extending from the a pillars to c pillars and one between the front seats as well in addition to that it has toyota pilot don't know if it's any good toyota software is generally just average or below average but it might be right because it's powered by Mementa 5.0, which includes more than 30 advanced driver assistance functions. And the system uses up to 33 sensing components, including a LiDAR unit in higher trims. It also has 544 tops of computing power. Not that that means a whole lot, but anyway, it's got plenty of computing speed. And that enables urban NOA, navigation on autopilot across varied driving scenarios. Now, I highly doubt it's going to be able to do that very well. But anyway, they're advertising that it has that feature. Other features include a panoramic glass roof. So it has that whole glass roof that a lot of EVs have, which frees up more space inside the cabin. 256 color ambient lighting, JBL 10 speaker sound system, acoustic glass, which is good for sound, reduces noise inside your car, and front seats with fully reclinable one-touch lie flat function. Four sleeping modes are available to customize in cabin rest settings now, i should point out a lot of people in china what they do during their lunch break is they go in their cars and they sleep because they work so much they work so many hours that they're always tired so i do feel very sorry for a lot of millions of people across the world and in china of course that have to do this and they get really tired and they have to go to their cars to have a sleep so anyway you can go in your car and it's got four different sleep modes that's a, that's a nice, nice feature. Buyers placing orders in June will get a discount, uh, a trade-in subsidy of $1,385, a choice of a $775 US dollar sports kit or six free uh, maintenance sessions, so six free servicing sessions. So it's even cheaper than what I've said. That means it's really more like $17,000. The BZ5 is Get it going to a market which has so many other cars, so many models to choose from. Probably for me, the, the car that I've driven that's similar to this in price, in fact, a little cheaper, is the Xpeng Mona. And I found that was a great car, fantastic to drive. If you want to see my video review on that, I'll put, when I say video review, I mean full test review in China. I'll put a link in the description below. Thanks for watching, guys. Let me know your thoughts. Would you, would you consider buying this? What do you think of that red interior?